Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of this 2 part video of the Ultimate Foam Dart Showdown. Between the 2 rib 1.3 gram rubbing darts, the 1.2 gram thin blue darts, and the 1 gram tea darts. Worker darts will be used as the general benchmark for comparison. Important context here. For this first part, the blaster used for testing is my Blizzard Pyro AEB, a variant of the Sweetheart Storm. It is tuned for 250 FPS cap games with 1 gram worker darts and it has a tiger barrel with an inner diameter of 12.7mm. For part 2 of this showdown, which will happen maybe in the next few weeks, springers will be used for testing instead. And we will introduce a new contender, 1.3 gram t darts. Like this video and subscribe to my channel to stay tuned to part 2 of this video, coming soon. I have to stress again that dart performance and test results for part 1 of this video are in the context of a 240 plus FPS AED. Testing of these darts with springers will be done in part 2. Results will vary across different blaster types like springers and flywheelers, and across many different FPS ranges. So this is not an all-encompassing video. Another disclaimer is that Sable has clearly stated that T-darts are meant for high-performance springers, and are not recommended for AEBs like the Storm, and flywheelers like the Diana and Nightingale, despite some players claiming that T-darts work fine for these blaster types. <laughs> Discussion about the results and more will be done nearing the end of this video. With the context established and disclaimers in mind, let's check out the dimensions first. These darts are all brand new and fresh from the oven. Standard worker shot darts are supposed to measure about 30mm in diameter and 36mm in length. But for the worker darts I received over recent months, their diameters have been very inconsistent, hence the darts have been performing quite badly. Nobody wants to buy inconsistent and poorly made darts, and this video should be a wake-up call for workers to improve their quality control. Next to press test. This is a very close one, but the blue dart seems to be just a little bit firmer than the rumbling dart. The rumbling dart is definitely firmer than the tea dart. The tea dart is very soft and the foam is thinner. And compared with a worker dart, the tea dart is also way softer. Here is the ranking for foam firmness. On a side note, the hole for the tea dart is bigger than the rest. I heard that it may help to have more air enter the dart and thus expand the foam more upwards, resulting in a better air seal and higher FPS. Next, glue strength. Worker dart glue strength is decent. Rumbling dart glue strength is ridiculous. The part of the dart head which is glued to the foam is still stuck inside. Blue dart glue is also extremely strong, and part of the dart head also stayed glued to the foam. T dart glue is quite strong too, but not as strong as the rumbling and blue darts. Here is the ranking for glue strength. Next chronograph test. Here is the summary of the chronograph test results. As expected, the 1 gram T darts have the highest average FPS of 232.5, compared with 227.9 for 1.2 gram blue darts and 222.8 for 1.3 gram rumbling darts. And from what I gathered from testings in previous videos, 
Good standard deviation numbers for foam darts do not always tell the full story when it comes to grouping and accuracy tests done outdoors at 30 meters. Now for the accuracy test, which is conducted outdoors with a torso sized cardboard target and an A4 sized paper pasted at the middle. I forgot to bring along my usual target boards, so I had to patch up this makeshift target out of a heavier cardboard box and with plenty of tape. I will be aiming at the red marking meant to simulate the target's head, and the target is at 30 meters. It is a wet and rainy day with light winds coming from the right side, so the darts are expected to veer off to the left of the target. This time, my blaster and optics are roughly zeroed to hit the human sized target at 30 meters. I will not be shooting worker darts today, as from past videos, we already established that worker darts are pretty much the worst darts to use currently. Instead, I will be shooting the rumbling darts, blue darts, and the T darts in this order. Here is the comparison of the accuracy test side by side. Honestly, with a 240 plus FPS blaster shooting at the 30 meters target, I am very satisfied with how these groupings look. Of course, we all know that the groupings will probably be much better with a 300 plus FPS high performance blaster. But majority of my local advanced games are mostly within the 250 FPS or 200 FPS limit. So I think this is good enough for most players like me. Also, it seems that the rumbling darts may be a bit too heavy as majority of the darts are hitting low. They are also veering to the left, and they seem more susceptible to wind direction. Maybe they will perform much better with a more powerful, higher FPS blaster to fully utilize its heavier weight. The T darts also seem to be hitting slightly lower and to the left, which could be caused by the light winds and lighter body weight. In terms of horizontal spread, the blue darts perform the best. They are also quite centered, which may indicate that the light winds did not affect their flight path that much. And here is an edited view of the groupings overlapping each other for an alternate comparison. And to further illustrate my earlier point on how good these three groupings are for a 240 plus FPS blaster at 30 meters, provided all conditions remain the same, let's superimpose these groupings on different targets roughly scaled to 30 meters. So for a big guy walking across the open field, almost all of the three dart types should hit him. How about a regular sized Milsim player running across the field? Yes, you can probably tag a regular sized Milsim player with any of these three dart types at 30 meters. How about a skinny Milsim player running and gunning towards you at 30 meters? Yes, you should be able to attack him easily too. So to put things into perspective, in general, you should have no issues tagging any player in the open field at 30 meters with rumbling, blue or t darts with a decent 240 plus FPS blaster. But when the player is shooting at me from behind cover at 30 meters, let's say a wall, a good horizontal spread comes into play and I will have a higher chance of tagging him. How about a barricade where the player is only exposing his head and upper torso? I will just aim slightly above his head to maximize my chances of tagging him. On a side note, regarding dart reliability for AEBs, I have fired about a thousand blue darts with my pyro so far and had zero gems on his feet. During the making of this video, I have also fired about 100 2 rib rumbling darts with one misfit and about 100 one gram T darts with two misfits. AEBs prefer darts with harder foam, hence the T dart soft foam is not suitable for AEBs like the pyro and storm which is also what was declared by Saber earlier. Anyway, what's the main takeaway of this video? Know your blaster well. Know how it works, what type of darts work best with it, and how the darts fly and spread towards the target. 
For my Blizzard Pyro AEB and Blue Darts, they are the perfect match for each other. Reliable, with no misfits and gems for about 1,000 shots so far, and accurate with very good horizontal spread. As mentioned earlier, the 1.3 gram rumbling darts may perform much better with a more powerful, higher FPS blaster to fully utilize its heavier weight. And together with the 1 gram T darts, I will be putting them through further testing with higher powered springers in part 2 of this video. And also introducing the next contestant, 1.3 gram T darts. Stay tuned.